Tom here from Learn Systems and PFSense Plus 21.02.2 and PFSense CE or Community Edition 2.5.1 has been released. Now, this is the first major update to really fix a lot of bugs since the release of the new PFSense Plus and the PFSense CE 2.5 series. And we all know it's been a bumpy road. There were a lot of little quirks and issues. Now, we actually were able to upgrade many of our clients, but there were certain conditions. And well, if you have those certain conditions, you've been holding off on this update altogether because those conditions made you essentially unable to update. So let's talk about all the details, what is changed in this new version. And some of the major changes are really just the removal of WireGuard, as they said, in their own words here, out of an abundance of caution, the kernel WireGuard implementation has been removed from these releases. That is one of the first things that really should be addressed. Yes, WireGuard has been completely removed currently from PFSense. I have no idea, although people like to ask me on Twitter and comment on my videos about, do you know if it's coming back? I assume at some point they will. I don't have any direct line of official statement from them other than what they post on their blog that I am reading to you along with the update. Head over to reddit r slash pfsense and you can see posts they do there. You can head over to their forums. They talk about it there or their blog, which I'm reading from. So I don't really know how to address it. But one important thing before you do these updates is going to be that you remove WireGuard and all WireGuard configurations prior to the update. The update will actually fail if you don't. So that's really important. And as always, before you update, make sure you have a backup. Make sure you have a downloaded copy of PFSense CE or a ready image so you can get the image of whatever device you may have from NetGate. You want to make sure you're prepared for these. This is often people get into a panic because they just hopefully assume the update will go well. Also, prior to update, Reboot the system once. That's just a generally good idea. Reboot it once, make sure it boots back up. That way you're only dealing with one issue. If you reboot it and it doesn't come back up prior to update, well, you have another problem that you need to address. And if you would have updated and then rebooted, you would have only found that problem and assumed the problem was because of the update. This actually just happened recently. So it's worth noting. Back to the actual changes of what is different now. And more specifically, what's fixed. So the big difference, WireGuard, what's fixed. I actually want to jump right on this one. This is one of them that hung us up from updating a couple clients. And this is the non-default WAN routing issue. And I was so happy to see this issue fixed. This was, like I said, one of the problems we ran into with a client that has, you know, as one does, some special use cases and slightly different setups. And they weren't just using the WAN for a failover, but that has been resolved. So that part made me really happy. Of course, the next thing is, what about DNS stability? Do I have to deal with that crashing? Now, this is a little bit less of an issue for some of our business clients because they're in Windows environments and Windows environments require, or to properly get them working, require that you have Windows be the DNS server for Active Directory. So this wasn't always an issue in those environments. And the workaround, the Band-Aid on it was to use the Watchdog service to tell DNS to start every time it crashed, which seemed to be very frequent on some systems and less frequent on others, but nonetheless, definitely a problem. That issue has been resolved. Now, we only loaded this the other day, so this is a day after the release. We did load it on our production systems. I've loaded on a handful of systems in our lab, and so far, none of them have had a problem with the DNS crashing. So cross your fingers, hope that's fixed, but so far, so good. If you want to continue waiting, and if there's some reason that it does fail, yes, I will probably do an updated video or follow me on Twitter, and I'll certainly be mentioning it or filing a bug report on this. They also updated to the latest OpenSSL to address some of the CVEs that are out related to that. And the IPsec tunnel identifiers and a couple other issues with that. So there was a issue with this that I only ran into a couple times where they wouldn't work when you did the upgrade. It broke some of the IPsec tunnels. You could rebuild them, but there were certain conditions that would uh, cause issues. All of that's been resolved. So now I guess it should work perfectly fine for doing an update from the version 2.4. The thing is, anyone that we had that had this problem because we fixed and rebuilt the tunnels uh, it didn't really matter. So we can update those systems and the IPsec tunnels should keep working. So those of you that held back or upgraded and rolled back, now you should be able to do that. Now, one of the things I thought was a little bit strange, and I just didn't, I don't think about this as much, but this was definitely a big oversight, was the alias stuff. People seem to be pretty upset about this. I get it, but I never think to change aliases once I create them. I change the contents of an alias, and this 
But what was an interesting problem because what, what happened is if you created an alias and then you changed the name of the alias, it would not propagate to all the firewall rules where that alias was used or other places it was used. So you should create an alias. I would normally, as I said, create an alias and not ever change the name of it because we'd purposely name the alias as part of the firewall setup when we're doing this for a client. And then I would change the contents or, you know, propagate that alias. And that's a great way to use it. But I ever think about changing the name of it. So I didn't notice this error, but I'm really happy that it's fixed. That way, if you do create a series of aliases and you go, oh, I want to rename that alias and you've already used it everywhere, that now has been addressed to so that problem. Although I didn't see it often in my setups because for the way we use it, uh, it's definitely something I know a lot of people had a problem with. Now, before we get too far, let's talk about known issues and errata that they have right here. There's a couple of edge cases where if you're using certain ciphers and AESNI acceleration, there are some problems apparently. And I thought this was a weird issue. I didn't run into it in all the systems we updated. Uh, I tried VPN, it worked fine, but there have workarounds. So please read this and double check before you update if you're using these ciphers in this combination. Also, if you're using the FRR routing package, please note the change of the default on there to not automatically announcing and instead implicitly needing permission to do the route announcements in BGP. There's those little details though that can really pull your hair out if you don't take the time to read this. And I actually encourage people to read the entirety of this fix list and just in case you have some edge case on there. But we've been continuing to update all of our systems here and all of them here went fine. The few clients that we did the updates for of course, all the lab systems have gone really well. That does include the ones we have virtualized, like this right here is currently running, the 2.51 release. And we did update several different random hardware devices we have here, and all of those seem to take it perfectly fine, the non-NetGate ones running CE. In front of me, I have a NetGate SG1100. We updated this. I updated my 2100 at home. I did that actually yesterday right away. It, you know, because it's my home one and I'll inconvenience a few people at my house, worst case on that. And I do a lot of this testing because I know the question comes up a lot of, hey, is it safe to run this? And people say, you know, I wait for a few people to tell me that are, you know, posting actively into forums or time to do a video on this. I've already had a few people message me on Twitter, like, hey, Tom, is it safe to upgrade? I'm doing all the testing as fast as I can uh, and trying it on many devices. I even had um, some Protectelli devices. And if you've seen my Twitter post, uh, we updated for it. I didn't grab them because they're actually part of a project in the other room that's part of our lab that we're building out. But even those went perfectly fine. So, you know, so far, I'm going to say the upgrade process has been smooth. I think because this is a 0.1 release that NetGate spent a lot of time just fixing things on, it should go generally pretty smooth. This 5100 and R5100, which runs HA proxy, free radius, multiple VPNs, lots of routing rules, many networks, VLANs, and separate interfaces for a lot of different things completely uh, went smooth and fast. Matter of fact, because I wanted to make sure it was done, I did it during the workday uh, with minimal disruption, just kind of on a bet that it would, you know, probably go smooth. I was gambling and my own staff were nervous, but eh, they just took a few minute break and it updated actually relatively fast and everything seems to be working perfectly fine. I even told it to update the Let's Encrypt and HA Proxy and all that restarted perfectly fine. So it does seem to be working well. But of course, it depends on how adventurous you're feeling. Always do a backup first before you update. But thus far, I think this bug fix release, which is I, which should be titled more or less, seems pretty solid thus far. Granted, yes, I know I've only been testing it for 24 hours roughly now. I think it was just about 24 hours right now from the time of this recording that the update became available. But I actually was testing uh, some of the release candidate ones as well, specifically with the uh, lab system here. And I updated from the release candidates that were uh, being tested where, you know, we troubleshot some of the things on here and that seemed to go very well and updating it to the full version. So I think it's probably safe to upgrade, decide how critical things are, or if you just want to wait a little bit longer. But for those of you that's sitting on 2.45 asking, you know, when should I do it? Because you wanted to skip that first initial release of the 2.5 or the, you know, PS Sense Plus initial releases. I get it, you know, waiting you're right, wait till that first point one release. And this isn't just a NetGate problem. This is, well, many companies that have done things like this. Sometimes their first release of a major release is not uh, not a lot of fun. It's for adventurous people who want to file bug reports and head over and 
you know, document what went wrong because, well, this is a community project still and community contributions back to it are what helped get this project moving forward. Letting them know those edge cases and what they missed when they wrote these updates, which apparently was a lot as we see all the things that got fixed there. But hey, this is the way forward. And uh, yeah, if you want to update it, go ahead and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.